Hello and welcome to a Tripwire demonstration on how Tripwire Enterprise could help with the WannaCry outbreak. My name is Paul Norris, also known as PJ, and I'm a Senior Systems Engineer for Tripwire. Before Tripwire, my background is information security, working in the industry for over 15 years. So to date, what do we know about WannaCry? Well, the infection has impacted thousands of organisations around the world. We know the attack to be a worm-based ransomware attack. The victims likely to have downloaded the malware as part of a phishing attack or by a drive-by click on an advert on a website. Once the machine is infected, the victim's data is encrypted. A ransom is requested by the attackers to decrypt the data. To propagate, the worm part of the malware will attempt to exploit a known vulnerability on Microsoft's SMB server. A security patch was issued by Microsoft back on the 14th of March 2017. The worm will scan the local network and random IP addresses attempting to connect to vulnerable machines that have not been patched and infect them. The vulnerability affects all Windows platforms that have been released. As part of the attack, the malware takes advantage of an old protocol still used by SMB, known as SMB version 1. For most organizations, it's safe to disable the SMB version 1 protocol which prevents the spread of this particular strain of malware. Finally, industry analysts have identified key indicators of compromise surrounding this attack, such as the known binaries, known file signatures, and registry keys. Tripwire Enterprise has a comprehensive set of policies, over 700 of them, that are available to customers to download. Some of these policies, such as CIS, ISO 27001, etc., strengthen and harden the security policy on the endpoints that will help prevent the spread of infection. In addition to out-of-the-box policies, custom policies can be created to focus on key indicators of compromise. For example, we can use real-time file integrity monitoring to monitor the Windows registry for specific known WannaCry keys or we can validate if SMB version 1 has been disabled on the endpoint. A policy can be written to see if the specific security patch has also been applied to the endpoint. With real-time monitoring, we can help identify known file hashes of the attack, as well as the binaries and registry keys. And finally, we can integrate with third-party products such as threat intelligence providers to help validate real-time changes and identify if it's a zero-day attack or not. In the demo, I'm going to show you how file integrity monitoring and custom created policy can help identify an attack. We'll emulate the attack on the endpoint and show you what changed in real time on the Tripwire console. Through matching changes on the endpoint against the known set of bad file hashes, we'll be able to see immediately when the binary was dropped and who was logged in at the time. Some custom policies will be able to show us the state of the patch on the endpoint and whether SMB version 1 has been disabled or not. Finally, I will show you how Twitter Enterprise can interact with the endpoint to make some policy changes. This is a dashboard that I've created in Twitter Enterprise. It's split into two parts. The first part shows me real-time changes to the endpoint. The second part is looking at compliance to specific indicators of compromise. We can see if the patch has been applied, if SMB is running, or if we've disabled SMB version 1 as well. We can also see if any WannaCry registry keys exist. I'm now going to emulate the attack on the endpoint, and let's refresh the dashboard. Now we see a much bleaker picture. Let's focus on the real-time state first. We can see that Tripwire has detected a binary that matches a specific hash that is known to the WannaCry outbreak. We have told Tripwire Enterprise to check each file and compare its hash against a blacklist of known threats. We can also integrate with third-party threat intelligence tools to do the same thing. We can validate the file hash with them or submit the binary to them for analysis. Tripwire Enterprise gives you context to the change too. As we can see here, we see the name and location of the file the date and time when it had dropped, and who the user was logged in at the time. Great information to start an investigation to ascertain how this machine was infected. Another important report to see is the changes by node report. We can see on this report two colors, which in fact represent files that were added and removed. 
As we click on this report, we can clearly see 87 files added and 87 files removed. If we click on what was added, we can see a number of files with the WCRY extension. One of the challenges when a ransomware attack occurs is having knowledge of what files were impacted or encrypted in the first place. It's hard to make a risk assessment on speculation on what files were encrypted on the endpoint. With Tripwire Enterprise, we detect changes, creations and deletions of files on the endpoint. If we click on the 87 files removed, we can see the files that were erased by the ransomware as it created new encrypted versions of the files. With this visibility, we can see what files were impacted, which will help with the risk assessment and knowing what files to recover from backup. Let's take a closer look at the compliance piece. We can see if the Microsoft patch has been installed on the endpoint. This report indicates the patch has not been installed. If we click on the report, we can see the remediation information. Another example is the presence of the known WannaCry registry keys. Again, if we click on the report, we can see the WannaCrypto key was discovered, indicating this endpoint could be compromised. Finally, we can review the status of the SMB version 1. It's recommended that SMB version 1 is disabled on endpoints to help prevent the spread of this ransomware. With Tripwire Enterprise, scripts can be written to make changes on the endpoint. Since SMB version 1 can be disabled by a registry key, I'm going to demonstrate how we can make that change on the endpoint. We'll click on the report again to review the findings and switch to a different view and list out the test results. We can now raise a new work order against this specific test. We will approve the work order and then remediate the policy. As part of the remediation, you can optionally request the endpoint to reboot so that the change takes place. Let's return to the dashboard and refresh the reports. We can now see that SMB version 1 has been disabled on the endpoint. We can also run custom scripts against other files. For example, Tripwire Enterprises reported it has discovered a file that matches the hash of the known malware. Let's click on the report again to review the findings. We'll switch to a different view, select the element and run a custom action. In this case, we'll run a script that will delete the file on the endpoint. As we return back to the dashboard and refresh, we can now see that the file has been deleted off the endpoint. Now we have concluded the live demonstration, I want to share with you some Tripwire's capabilities in helping with file integrity monitoring and compliance. Most people know us for file integrity monitoring. This was our first product and we are still best in industry at detecting integrity changes and, as we have learned today, not just on files. We've added configuration and policy management to our core capability to make it more robust and useful and added automation to reduce the workload associated with compliance management. We added log management capabilities to make sense of the data generated by your operations. And we acquired a technology that helps you identify the biggest risks in your network with the industry's most precise risk scoring algorithm so you can set actionable priorities. We've integrated all these capabilities to work together seamlessly for real risk reductions. And finally, we have an open architecture so we can exchange our unique asset state data with many of the most used vendors in the IT industry and operations space. Tripwire also has a vulnerability management solution called Tripwire IP360. By running a host inventory scan, we can discover all the devices on the network, including those you are not aware of. When a worm-based malware, such as WannaCry, breaks out inside a corporate network, it will scan the network looking for unpatched vulnerable systems to infect. Having knowledge of what assets are on your network will give you the advantage to secure or decommission them before the virus discovers them for you. Tripwire IP360 can validate if Windows endpoints are vulnerable to the WannaCry malware by searching for the specific CVEs related to the threat. As IP360 profiles the network, there is a central repository that can be searched against. Using Tripwire IP360's focus report, we can enter specific indicators of compromise, such as search for a specific port open on a Windows system that is running SMB version 1 protocol. 
We have a wide range of resources available on our website and don't forget to subscribe to our security blog called Tripwire State of Security where you will find a number of articles written by professionals including myself. So that concludes our webcast for today. Thank you very much for listening and goodbye.